Hi everyone, my name is Laura. This is a channel about cross stitch and this is floss tube number 16. I am so happy to be back. I've been wanting to film a video for a while. I really missed sharing with you all and interacting with you in the comments. I have tried to stay somewhat active on Instagram and in the Facebook group just so I didn't totally disappear, but I have really missed the Floss Tube channel. So, so happy to be back and a big thank you to everyone who was so supportive and I was just really amazed that I did not lose any subscribers while I've been gone these last two months. That is just so amazing to me. So thank you so much to everyone who patiently waited for me to come back. When I left you in my last video, I had mentioned that I was taking a step back from the channel because my 15 year old dog had just suddenly gotten very ill and we were trying to figure out the care that she needed and what was going on and also she needed full-time care from me during that time and it just increasingly got more and more as those months went on so I'm very glad that I made that decision not only with the floss tube channel but just in my personal life as well I really dedicated those two months to her and unfortunately she did pass at the very end of March um, her body just couldn't handle anymore so I won't go into all those details and bore you with that but um, just know that we did all that we possibly could and she was with me till the very end and I miss her dearly. Um, so she, she passed at the very end of March and today is April the 15th that I'm filming this. So I did have to take some time just to kind of deal with those emotions and still dealing with them. But um, I do plan on starting a piece uh, to remember her and other pets that we've lost as well. So I'll share that with you in plans. But just a big thank you to everyone for your kind comments, your thoughts and prayers. I really appreciate that from my last video. It really meant a lot to me. So anyway, that's just a quick update. So I do plan to be back to making regular floss tube videos just like before now that things have kind of settled down in life and I can be on a more regular schedule again. And so, I look forward to um, sharing more frequent updates with you like I was before. And one thing that I've really been wanting to incorporate into the channel for a while now is uh, doing some live stitch with me's. And so that's basically, instead of seeing maybe me on the camera, you would be seeing my stitching up close and you could bring a project and it's a live event. So I would schedule a time and then you can chat live in the comments and ask questions or just chat about what we're stitching on. And just another way for me to get to know you and just another, just more stitchy content in the floss tube world and that I know we all so much love and enjoy. Now I do know that live events are not for everyone. Not everyone enjoys them and I totally understand that. Please know that that will not replace my regular floss tube. You won't miss anything if you just are not into the live events. That's just more an extra. So if that's not your thing, no worries. But if you do like that kind of thing, let me know in the comments and give, if you have some ideas or some suggestions of something you would love to see, I'm very open to it. I am still like working out the software that I need and things like that and my, where I'm gonna film it and that kind of set up thing. So, but I hope to implement that soon. Um, and possibly even some pre-recorded stitch and chats, just different things that I would love to add into the channel. So like I said, just let me know in the comments what you think about that. And if you have some other ideas, I'd love to hear them. So yeah, just let you know that I am back now. So if I do go live, I will probably post in the Facebook group when I'm gonna go live. And I will also schedule it. I think I can schedule it on YouTube. So if you're subscribed, you will get a notification saying Textilly is going to go live at such and such a date. So you can like plan, and, you know, if you want to be there for that time. But if you can't make it, those live videos are still saved and to the YouTube channel so that you can watch them later if you, if you miss them and you want to just listen while you stitch one day. So I'll do, be doing that and I think on my streaming software that I'm looking at I can bring on guests so it would be so fun occasionally to maybe get other floss tubes on when we're stitching and we can stitch with each other and chat and then chat with you all as well. So anyway just planning on doing some fun things within this year so look forward to that and yeah let's get into the video. I've got so much to show you. I have no idea how long this video is going to be. I'm just going to go with it. I've tried to make a list to be somewhat organized but 
I was filming every two weeks, so it was very manageable and easy to show you, you know, my purchases and what I was working on, but this is like two months worth of stuff. So I'm sure I'm going to miss some things and there's going to be some overlap and categories. So I do apologize, but I do want to show you as much as I can. And honestly, if it hadn't been for us having Nashville in between this filming, I probably wouldn't have nearly as much to show you. So that has made up a big portion of my purchases. So as I mentioned before, I am a very seasonal stitcher. Uh, before Easter, I got very into spring stitching. And part of it was because I received this pattern in the mail. And this is a Fat Quarter Shop exclusive, and it is a club from Stitching with the Housewives. It's the spring sayings of the season. And so the first one we got is the spring and it is stitched on black and so we got 28 count black monaco in the kit as well as some backing fabric and the floss colors of the classic color works that was called for and i love it on that i just don't love stitching on black personally i do occasionally if I really think the pattern needs it, and I have one coming up in plans that I feel like does, but this one I really thought I could change the fabric, and I think it will match my decor better anyway. So I do apologize, I forgot to press all of these, and I knew I'd forget something when I sat down to film, and that was it. So anyway, this is my finish. I also forgot my clips, so you can tell it's been a while since I filmed. But this is the Spring Saying of the Seasons on 36 Count Baklava by Grace Notes Fabrics, stitch one over one. So obviously, because I stitched it on a lighter, more neutral fabric, the white letters were not going to work. So I changed the letters to Trail Dust, I think, by Classic Color Works. And I also ended up changing um, a lot of the other colors. I think I only kept a few. And I did write down my conversions, so when I post this fully finished on Instagram, I will include the conversions with that so that um, for anyone who's interested. But the colors that I left out were all uh, these much more brighter colors. So these are all the colors in the kit that I ended up leaving out. A really bright orange, the brighter blue, and bright pinks. I just felt like they were too much. I was going for a, a little more warmer muted color palette. So I did change out the pinks and the blues, and I did use the green that was called for. And I used a little bit of the white that was called for as well, just not for the letters. So this is the finish, and I really love this. It's kind of a unique size. Um, the stitch count is 196 by 35. So if you stitch this on 28 or 14 count, it would come out to be 14 inches by two and a half inches. So it's really long, but it's very narrow. So she finished this on some piece from Hobby Lobby. I think it has like, it's like a flower box. You had to put stuff in the top. I don't want to have to deal with that every time I'm changing this out. So I got on Etsy and I've been wanting to order from a frame company called The Rusty Roof found a frame for this that I think is going to be perfect. I will either do the magnets and washers or I may just um, I may just go ahead and frame it and not worry about that because it was a very reasonably priced frame considering how much frames can be and I'm thinking for each season depending on what fabric and colors I use I may want to change the frame color. So this is a 4 by 12 frame because remember mine is on 36 count so it's smaller than the uh, stitch count the the finish size that I gave you off the pattern. So this is in saddle stain S-A-D-D-L-E and this is what it looks like. It has a little bit of distressing and it does come with a I don't know if that's regular glass or if it's acrylic, but it does come with something if you want to use that to protect your needlework. Um, when you order, you select if you want it to have a dowel stand or if you want it to have a, to be able to hang it. So I selected dowel stand, so they drill a hole and they give you the dowel, which is this, to stick in the back and so that you can prop it up on your shelf. So. I think this is going to be perfect for this piece and I'm excited to get this one fully finished and this one I will link it below because I don't remember the name of let's see it says this is the distressed Emily frame because they name all of their frames they have a lot of different options they have 
uh, different stains and then they also have a, a ton of different paint colors so that you could really find one to match any of your projects and I have another one here that I've ordered that I'm going to show you in with another one so uh, this is what I plan on fully finishing this one in I don't know that I'm going to have room to do like a backing fabric behind this I'm going to have to just wait till I cut it out and see I thought about going a little bit bigger with the frame but honestly I will be happy if I have there's no extra fabric behind it if it's just framed as is that's fine with me but anyway you have a lot of different sizes to fit whatever project that you're working on so that was my first spring finish that I wanted to share and then the week of Easter I just I was so in the mood for Easter stitching and not that I didn't have a ton of patterns in my stash already, but I was browsing on Etsy and I just wanted something that I could download and start stitching right away. So I found a, a, sh a shop called, I believe it's Asbury's Echoes, and I will link that below because I'm, I'm not quite sure how you spell that, but um, she had so many cute, and her style is very primitive, and I decided to take those and just change up my colors, and I was going to do it on this same fabric. I really loved how the spring pieces looked on this fabric. It really matches the colors of my house really well. So um, let me see, I stitched them all on the same piece and I haven't cut them out yet. So let me see if I can show you. So this is one I did post on Instagram for Easter. Just, he has risen, a very simple design. I think it was charted in three colors where the border was a different color, but I ended up doing the border and the letters the same and then the cross a different color. So I just love the simplicity of that. And I do want to make this into a pillow, but I was looking through my trims and I really feel like the chenille trim and definitely not the pom-pom trim that's just too much for this. It needs something, either no trim at all, or what I'm, um, and I need to wait for it until it comes in, but I saw Colorado Cross Stitcher. She, one of her latest newsletter articles was about different trims. And then she mentioned using Baker's twine for trim and I do not know why that I hadn't thought of that because actually and I pulled it out just to see but for the finishing class I took with luminous fiber arts during the jingle ball she had us use the baker's twine around the ornament and she actually had us double it so this is doubled baker's twine to hang it so I have used that as finishing but I guess I just wasn't thinking since this was an ornament and kind of more of a flat fold but yeah you could easily glue that onto a pillow and I think it's very thin, so it would just give just a little touch around the edges of the pillow. So I have some ordered, and I'm anxious for that to come in. So I will either put just a thin baker's twine around this as trim, or I would just leave, leave it off and just leave it this simple, and I think it's very pretty. So then I stitched, um, these are all three from her Etsy shop. They're all PDF downloads, and these are all on 36 count baklava stitch one over two, and so this one is Happy Easter, and it's got the little bunnies and the little tulips. So this one, and once again, for all of these, I just picked all the colors that I was working with for the spring one, and um, just other colors that I had on hand that really worked well in this palette. So she had this charted where the bunnies were the same color, but I actually customized this because I have had bunnies and I wanted them just to kind of match the colors of the bunnies that I had. So I had a really dark gray, um, he was called a gray blue, and then a more ginger colored rabbit. So I just did that as a little something um, that's special to our family. So that was the stitch. And then lastly from her, I did uh, Spring Blessings and I went with like a blue and pink color palette on this one. So this is Spring Blessings. And I plan on making these other two that I'm showing you into um, pillows as well. So for this, the, the bunny one, I probably will use a chenille trim. I have a few that would work well. For the Spring Blessings, I have a pink chenille trim that I'm thinking about using, but I also had the thought of if the baker's twine works i wonder if like a macrame cord would work i know it's thicker and it may not work but they had some pinks on amazon so i've ordered some just to see if i like it when it comes in if i don't no big deal i'll just you know um end up going with the chenille but anyway loved those little stitches they were very quick i think i did all those three in just a week or two for evening stitching so i really enjoyed stitching those for the spring and Easter season. So those were my spring finishes. And then I have one more finish to share with you. 
And this one I had also posted to Instagram because I wanted a little bit of help uh, deciding on how I wanted to fully finish it. Still have not yet, but at least I know what I'm doing. So this is the Little House Needleworks chart that came complimentary with the new floss colors from um, Classic Color Works that were released at Nashville. So you get this chart and you can decide if you want to stitch them. This shows you if you did all one color versus if you use all three colors in um, that you get in. It was three releases of colors for Nashville. Let's see, it was Weather Vane, London Fog, and Misty Mauve. So I thought this was a really fun way to try out the new colors to really get used to working with them. And I'm going to show you, this is not finished, the ends are sticking out of the frame, but I had done it this way so I could take a picture for Instagram. And this is what it's going to look like fully finished. And so I did go with the all three option. And this is stitched on 36 count platinum, stitched one over two. And so I do have to just take the time to fully actually frame this, but this is what it's going to look like. I was going to make this into a pillow, but I make so many pillows and I had this frame and I thought, I wonder if that would look good in this frame. And when I, I put it on, I just absolutely loved it. And the votes on Instagram agreed that it, this one should go in the frame. So that is what's going to happen with this one. And this is a four by six frame um, from Amazon. It's very heavy and it does have glass that is glued in, so I can't take that out. So I apologize for the glare, but also, if you'll notice, on the original pattern, it's a shortened alphabet. It's got ABC and XYZ, and then 2024. So I decided to customize it with family initials instead, and an anniversary date, so that it could just be a little more customized and special to me. And I just love how it came out, and I love the colors. I really think they're great neutrals and um, great to add to my stash. So glad I got that. So that is all for the finishes, and I know that's not a lot. I didn't have, my stitching time was, some days I had a lot, some days I didn't. It really just depend on what was going on at the time. And so also I found myself, usually in the past, I was not a monogamous stitcher, but I would kind of pick up two, three, maybe even four at the most to work on within a one or two week period. But with all this going on, I've just found myself picking up, wanting to pick up different whips and start new things. And I think it's just because it's kind of a more of a distraction. And so I haven't found myself being able to really stick with one thing as long, but that's okay. I'm allowing myself the grace to just go with the flow. I know stitching is kind of, can be a therapeutic for, for a lot of us. And so, I'm just kind of enjoying and whatever I feel like working on that day is what I'm going to pick up. So that is why I don't have a lot of finishes and you'll see more of just whips in general. So anyway, that's just kind of where, where I've been lately. So as far as whips go, um, this is going to be a mix of haul because some of this stuff did come in since I showed you last. This is a 2 4 and I posted about me starting this. I bought the pattern and I really didn't intend to start it right away, but I had noticed Abby at Top Notch Stitchery was doing a live and she had mentioned that she was starting on March 24th because 324. And so I just thought it was really fun. I have the floss and I thought, well, let me just go ahead and start it on that day too. And I only, my goal is one motif a day. That is it. I know if I give myself a higher goal, it pro I probably won't stick to it. And I really would love to get this finished, even though it may take a year to do, that's okay. I really am going to love having this done to be able to display and frame near my floss collection. So this is my progress having done it every uh, one motif a day since March 24th. And I am doing this on 25 count Lugana, stitching one over one. So for this one, I, I rarely stitch on plain white fabric. I love hand dyed fabrics and they are just beautiful. So I really don't feel drawn to just plain white very often, but for something like this, the floss is really what makes this piece, all the colors. So I had thought about what would it look like on a gray or black, but I was a little nervous some of the colors would not show up once I got really far into this, like, you know, somewhere in the blues or something, or those greens. So I just decided just go with the white and on 25 count, it's going to be a nice, um, a little bit smaller size. I think the original was stitched on 36 count. So I love how it's coming out, loving the coverage. 
and this is my first time really trying a project on the 25 count one over one so it's a great opportunity to do that but before I forget since I mentioned the black and gray fabric um, the designer works by ABC she just posted on Instagram a digital rendering mock-up showing on the black and gray because some people were asking about that like what would it look like if I if I were to do it so if you want to see that if you haven't started it yet or you may want to you know restart or something go check out her Instagram to see um, you know what it would look like and it actually does look really pretty it would be beautiful on any of the three colors you know if you were to do it on the darker background it would be fine so anyway I'm, I'm happy with my choice I was thinking I'm, I'm not one I've never washed a cross stitch piece when it's finished I know some people do um, I've just never really thought to do that or needed to do that but with this being white I was thinking with me picking it up daily if we're probably a year I'm worried that this white is going to get kind of dirty so this may be one of the first pieces I actually try washing before I get it framed. Um, that's just something I'm, I will have to think about it because sometimes white can get kind of a yellow tint or dirty looking and you don't even realize it um, over time. And so I don't know, I'll just have to think about that when I get there. I would be okay washing this, I think, because it's not over dyed. I would never wash an over dyed piece because that dye can easily bleed. I would be nervous about it. So, uh, you know, let me know if you've had success with certain detergents. I have a lot of different specialty like brushes for my knitting yarns like wools and cottons so I may need to choose one of those more delicate rinses for something like this if I was to hand wash it but anyway that's just the thought well not not there yet but just something I'm thinking about for the future so so anyway this does lead me to a little bit of a talk about fabric because as I mentioned this is my first time doing the 25 count one over one I absolutely love the coverage for this piece um, I know 25 count one over one is a very common is count choice for people who love doing full coverage designs like heaven and earth designs because you do get really good coverage. For this, because I'm trying to just do these small motifs, the coverage is beautiful. It is perfect. However, I dislike when my stitches are very tight and close together and that may just be my stitching style, how I stitch, the, you know, how I tension things. And so I can tell I would not love this if I was stitching probably any other piece like because I thought about doing 25 count on some of those bigger um, little house needleworks like fall on the farm or the Christmas things because they're such big pieces I thought it would be nicer to have this on a small count like 25 count but I just I feel like my stitches aren't as neat. I can't always see if I've overlapped what thread I'm on. So then this is using one strand of DMC or any other cotton. Cotton, you know, the over dyes doesn't matter. So this is, this was what I was thinking. Like, I don't know that I would love this if I was doing that for um, some a, a typical pattern that I was working on. So for something like this, love it, not changing. The coverage is awesome. If I was doing a full coverage, I think it would be awesome. But I just think I would struggle if I was doing this for those other patterns. So that got me thinking, like browsing online for, okay, 20 count Adas and different things. And somehow I came across this fabric and I don't know how I have not found this, seen this in all my shopping for fabrics. And so I came across this 20 count Lugana fabric and I have never seen this before. The thing about it is it comes in very limited colors. It is a Zweigart fabric. So it came in like white, ivory, mushroom, and then some very light pastel colors like a green, a pink, and a blue. Um, so not a lot of color options, but I did order a piece. This one actually came from Amazon. And this is the label that it came with. It's Weigart, and it is called, here's the name of it, Bellana, B-E-L-L-A-N-A. So it is a Lugana, and like I said, it's 20 count. So I got this thinking, okay, since I didn't love the 25 count, the, since my coverage was really dense on that, because I'm the type, I don't mind seeing a little bit of fabric through my stitching for the type of stitching that I'm doing. I'm not usually doing full coverage. So um, I got this piece of, I think this was the white um, floss, I mean the white color. So since it's Lugana, it is a blend, and I did just a tiny little sample at the top. So the blue floss is sulky, and then the orange floss is one strand of DMC. 
So I really haven't had a chance to really play with this. I want to pick a pattern to do it with because I really don't enjoy just sitting here stitching these little swatches, but um, I was just testing it out. So you can see, in my opinion, the Sulky is always one and a half strands compared to the DMC. So it's just a little bit thicker. So it has really good coverage. I still found my stitches laid neat, but I, I'm happy with that one strand of the DMC as well. So I bought this thinking that maybe I would play with dyeing it or something later, and I may do that, but later I got this piece of mushroom from 123 Stitch because it's just a really good neutral color, so this may be what I end up doing my sample on. So this is the 20 count Lugana in the mushroom. So just to see if I can show you a comparison. So this is going to be the 25 count weave. I don't really know if this camera is going to pick it up well, but I'll try to show you comparatively. This is the 20 count. So in person, you can definitely tell the holes are bigger. I can see both very easily, um, but obviously the 20 count is even easier to see. So if you like working with the 20 count uh, Ada or something, it may be something you want to try if you haven't before. But I really enjoy working with even weave fabrics. I always I have since I started since I tried them after coming after starting with Ada when I started learning to stitch. The only thing about it is I love using hand dyed fabrics so much. So I got on a lot of the popular hand dyed fabric uh, websites because usually when you go in there they have all the different fabrics you can choose from. And I noticed that the 20 count Lugana is not a common choice. So I don't know if it's because it's not popular or if it's because it's hard to get. Um, I did notice, I think on 123Stitch some of the colors were out of stock. So that may be a factor. The only place I think I found it is Grace Notes Fabrics and I love her uh, fabrics anyway. So I am going to order a piece because I'm really curious to see if these holes close up a little bit more like they do with a lot of other hand-dyed fabrics. And honestly, I think I would like it even a little bit more if it was just a little bit tighter, but not quite as tight as the 25 count. So I need to order another piece of that 36 count baklava anyway. I may just order that same color in a 20 count Lugana and just compare and see what I think and I'll let you know. So yeah, let me know if you've tried this before and what you think. Just thought this it would be nice to have this as an option to do one over one for some projects when I want them to be a little bit smaller in size. So that brings me to my next whip because I had another idea about the 25 count. Um, I've been wanting to start this pattern since I saw it, I think last year. It is just so beautiful. I thought it was fitting to start it for Easter, even though when it is finished, I will leave it up year round because it is just a beautiful red sampler in my opinion. But it is from Quaint Rose Needle Arts and I've seen several people finishing, working on this this year. It is just so beautiful. I've seen some people, they just stitch the top and they leave the bottom off. I think I'm gonna stitch the whole thing. I just, I, it's just, I love the whole piece together. So I was thinking about the 25 count, how I could make it work more for me. And I have not had an opportunity to use the Swa 103 silks much because my sweet spot with linen when I go for sampler stitching is 36 count. I can stitch on 40. I just struggle a little more. It takes me a little bit longer. I just really love 36 count. It's it's much easier for me. And so because of that, I usually end up going with the Swa Del Jay. So the Swa Del Jay is like a stranded silk. It comes in these little hanks and then you just pull them apart and separate them like you do DMC. And uh, the Swa 103 comes on the spools, similar to the Sulky. And it's just a little bit thinner for those who like to st stitch on 40 count or higher. And I had two spools of this um, that I had gotten with a kit or something, and I just had not had a chance to use them yet. So knowing that this is just a little bit thinner than the other, I thought, let me try this on 25 count. And I had this beautiful red in my stash. It is the color 681. And so I tried it on this pattern and I absolutely love it. It is just a little bit thinner than the cotton, but for me, my stitches look so neat and the coverage is still great. Um, I really can't see much of my fabric through it, but for me, I'm perfectly happy with it. So I have been working on this and I'm trying to just go page by page. So I've started the, the border for page one and then did the cross and I'm working up with all the vines and the florals here in the center. But this is the coverage and I absolutely love it. It is just so beautiful to work with. I love working with the silks anyway. 
and this is on 25 count this is from Colorado cross stitcher let's see uh, Lugana in the color if I can show you potato and so I just absolutely love it and I'm so happy to know that I found a solution when I do want to work with this that I really enjoyed working with the, the 103s and the 25 count one over one so i just wanted to share that with you so that was another whip that i started next one i did get a page finish again on rachel sheared which is a hands across the sea sampler this was an exclusive for a while but I, I think i saw on instagram it has been released to the public so if you like this i've been wanting to stitch it it is available now i believe and this was my birthday start from last year well, I started later in the year, but it's going to be my birthday sampler for the last year. And so this is my start. I got another page finish, and this is on 36 count Little Bunny by XJU Designs. And so I've made it all the way to the text. And like I said before, the only change that I've made is changing the text color. It was black but I decided to do it the dark burgundy color to make it just a little less contrast than before, but still a darker and easy to read. So absolutely love this fabric. I am doing it on um, all with the Soie Delger silks, stitched uh, one over two. And I just realized, I think I said Little Bunny, it's Marbled Bunny by XJU Designs. So one of my favorite hand dyed linens. So that is my progress. Did try keeping up with Whipco, but I really wasn't able to make much progress on the projects for February and March as well. So I decided to just put that aside and just work on what I wanted to work on. And I also misplaced my Whipco list. I had it all written out for the numbers and it must be in a project bag somewhere or something. I don't know. It's And it's not like me to misplace it. I usually always have a dig digital backup of that as well but I forgot to make one. So anyway, that being said, this was one of the Whipco calls. This is the pattern, the ornament that I'm working on, the nativity. And I, this was a restart for me because I didn't like the fabric that I chose. The original was stitched on 32 count natural linen. And so I ended up going with 36 count natural. So very similar um, and more similar to the original and I'm much happier with that progress. So this is on 36 count and it is stitched one over two. The white, I can tell in that letter on the camera that my light is washing that out a little bit, but in person it does stand out on this fabric. So I'm happy with how the colors are coming out. I am choosing my own as I go, just using some of my favorite classic color works like Manor Red, English Ivy, and Yield Gold, which are just a lot of colors that I use during for my Christmas stitching. And this one was also a Whipco call. I had I did share some of this. I think I have a little bit more progress since I shared it on Instagram. But this is the Bower Birds by Liz Matthews. Um, this is the original, and it's stitched on the color Dove Linen by Weeks Dye Works, which is a beautiful dark green. I started it on the call for 36 count, was struggling with that, and I thought it was because I was new to 36 count at the time when I started this about a year ago or whenever it was. Um, so I got 32 count in Dove, and I still struggled with that, and I think for some reason it's just that color. I, I have pretty good eyesight, and even with my readers and my light, I, could, I usually couldn't even get through one thread without my eyes just really bothering me. And I think it's just because of all the colors going on in that linen and it's a darker color. And so I just felt like if I'm ever gonna finish this, I need to restart it on something that I enjoy stitching on more. So I kind of hated that because I really loved, you know, how the original looked and I know it would have been beautiful, but you know, if I'm gonna finish it, I need to change. So I, ha it's a one color design. And so I had some Belsois silk, silk in my stash, and Chester's Blue is one of my favorite blues from Classic Color Works Belsois. And so I decided this was gonna be my color. And so I was sampling all different kind of linens, and I had this in my stash. Actually, I had to go find it because I was just picturing it. I was like, I wonder if that would go. And so this is Ancient by Picture This Plus. So let me open it out a little bit more and I apologize that it's not pressed. But if you can see that color of 
the blue in that linen is just like a perfect match with this Chester's blue. So I love those together. So this is my fabric and it's 32 count, but I'm still doing one over two because in my opinion, the picture of this plus fabric is a very tight weave, so it works out well. So I have a good start on the alphabet. I did start it in a different place this time, and I think that's working out better as well as far as figuring out where I am, and I'm kind of trying to stitch the border as I go. So this was something that I kind of picked this up right when I was getting back into stitching because there was a period there where I just wasn't stitching at all. I did finish that crochet overlay that I had showed you in the last video. I haven't, um, I haven't blocked it yet. So, and I'm also looking for a summer dress that goes well with it, but I'll show you that in a future video. But I did finish crocheting that and then I kind of got back into cross stitch once I kind of figured out what was a new normal for us during that that period. So this next whip leads me into a little bit of happy mail too. Um, so one of my subscribers, Jeanette, she won one of the giveaways in one of my past videos and she so kindly sent me a little thank you package with a little sweet card and some beautiful scissors and a scissor fob. And let me show you. It's got the little, I don't think my camera will focus, but a little sheep and I absolutely love that since I love yarn and spinning and you know all the textile crafts obviously because of the name so um anyway i just i love this and it was crazy because i have a pair of these gold scissors like this and i could not find them anywhere and i'd been looking for them you know soon bef right before this package came in and i kind of gave up and i know they're somewhere you know in a bag or something and then she sent me these and i thought that's perfect so you can never have too many scissors so thank you jeanette but she also sent me some floss and it is from a company i have not tried so i went and followed them on instagram after i got this in so it's threadworks so this is the company and it's a beautiful over dyed green and purple so it's got light purple shades and then it goes into the green so I immediately thought I want to pick a project and try this so that is what I did and I itched uh, the modern folk embroidery cranky owl I did that one with DMC variegated floss and I loved how that turned out it's just a one color design so it really looks good in the variegated in my opinion so I thought let me go see what modern folk has another little small piece so I have enough floss to finish the whole design and so I ended up come uh, doing the Quaker medallion bird in a grapevine I just thought that was really fitting because the the colors of the floss the purple and the green so this is actually the same stitch count as the cranky owl I think it's um, 79 by 79 or something like that um, and so I'm doing it on 40 count uh, platinum and this is my progress so far with the variegated floss and I just love how it's coming out with the little touches of purple and then the green so when I was ordering my frame from the rusty roof I was like browsing around and I decided to just order one from them to see if it would go with this piece and because I thought about doing a hoop finishing on this like they did here but then I thought maybe I would like a square frame because of the shape of the border so I ended up going with another frame from them so this one is a five by five frame in weathered Emily so it's a little bit different than the other one in the color oregano so this is what the frame looks like and I also went with the same dowel so it will stand up on its own so they sent me enough to do all of that and so I just think it's going to really work well with this piece and I think I should have it should fit well within the 5x5 five five because I still have to add that whole border around there so um, I measured and I think it's going to work really well and I thought about a purple frame would go well too but I think in my decor I don't have a lot of purple in my house but I do have a lot of green so I think this would go much better it's a really good neutral and so I really am loving the frames from the rusty roof and like I said they were very reasonably priced and the shipping was good they they emailed me when they shipped and I was really happy so I will definitely be ordering from them again okay I'm about ready to start with the haul but before I do that I want to mention a couple of floss tubers obviously throughout this time I have been watching so much floss tube um, trying to keep up with all my regulars and I'm really enjoying you know just keeping up with everyone so I don't want to just start naming all those because I know I'll leave someone out so I just want to mention two 
new floss tube channels that have started since I was gone and they've already posted a couple videos so that just shows you how long it's been but one is cross stitch Sarah uh, she's been on Instagram I had been following her from the beginning and like from the, when I got on Instagram so she finally decided to start a floss tube and, and I'm so glad that she did because she has some of the most beautiful projects and I love seeing the fabrics that she chooses the beautiful colors and just um, it's so inspiring so check out her channel she is in the UK and she is just a joy to watch and then the other channel is Hannah at the Pokey Needle. Uh, she was someone else that I was following on Instagram and she decided to start a channel as well. And she's already made a couple of videos and she did her first giveaway on her channel, which is always fun and exciting to do. So she had contacted me to see if I would like to do her first giveaway. And and I thought that was really so sweet of her to think of me. I mean, I'm brand new to designing. I only have three patterns out so far. So she really, you know, did not have to do that. There's so many wonderful things out there. But that was really sweet. So Hannah, thank you so much. And she has already drawn the winners. I just emailed them their PDF patterns. And so um, anyway, yeah, check out her channel. She has a similar stitching styles. She, you know, does a lot of different things. And you uh, chooses a lot of different beautiful fabrics to stitch on so I think you'll enjoy watching her as well so yeah I will link both of their channels below and while I'm talking about designing obviously uh, since I wasn't able to stitch that much I really wasn't able to design and I mainly I wasn't able to sit at my desktop where my software is and really focus on designing during this time but honestly since uh, she's passed I found it I haven't felt as creative, let's just say that. I've really, you know, still struggling with some of these emotions. So um, I've just kind of really been allowing myself um, just to enjoy the stitching process for right now and not putting any extra press pressure on myself. So I've, I'm keeping a notebook with little ideas and whenever the creativity strikes, I will get back to it. For now, the designing is just an extension of my hobby. It is not like a full-time job uh, for me right now. So as I have ideas, I will do them, but just um, know that it is still something I definitely am pursuing. I just have had to step back from that for right now. So anyway, um, hopefully more will be coming later though. So. I will definitely let you know when when I get back to it. So let's get into haul and plans. I think this is gonna kind of be mixed together. And like I said, please bear in mind, this is from like two plus months of, of stuff that I have not showed you. So if you're new, if this is your first time watching, this is not a usual haul for me. This is not something I do every two weeks. So in fact, after this, I am going on a little bit of a diet from or trying to be good because I've got so much stuff, so many patterns I need to stitch. This is just, this is, this is just so much. But Nashville came and it was hard to resist and I was doing a little bit of retail therapy. So, you know, I couldn't resist some of the things. And like I said, I really, I pre-ordered, I thought was a small amount. And then I would watch Floss Tube channels where they would show their haul and I think, oh, that's so pretty. I really love that. I have to have that. So, <laughs> so anyway, like I said, this is just over two plus months of me um, collecting stuff and I've been just accumulating it in boxes so that I didn't forget to show you. So let's see, let's go through the non-Nashville stuff or some of the non-Nashville stuff real quick and then we'll get into the Nashville. So my, um, this is my Be In The Bonnet Stitch Card Set T came in and I'm just subscribed to that. So they send them automatically from Fat Quarter Shop and this is like a spring theme. So I love the little bunny and the carrots. So this came in and this came in right after I filmed my last video. So I've had this for a while. Uh, this is an exclusive kit for a stitch in time in Australia. Okay, my camera just stopped on me. It said a maximum recording time reach. That's never happened to me because normally my videos are not this long. So <laughs> I do apologize, but I really wanted to get to everything so that we can pick up back on a regular schedule when I um, start filming again, you know, every two weeks or so. So anyway, this kit I ordered from Australia and it is exclusive from Hands Across the Sea to their store called A Stitch in Time. And it is called A Stitch in Time saves nine because that is the little saying on the red sampler and i just loved this one it's so pretty so we got a little printout sticker of the sampler in the kit so i chose a kit that had 36 count linen which is just the ticket by tabby cat and then it came with two skeins of the soi silk 
So this is what I plan to stitch it with, at least the silk color. Um, but I think it really looks well. It really goes well with this Tabby Cat linen. So this is the second of the series for this year's um, club from the Silver Needle called A Circle of Friends. And this one is our, or it's called A Little Help from Our Friends, I think. And so um, every time we get a new designer, and this time it is the Scarlet House. So this is the beautiful kit in the pattern. Let me see what it says. Flowers and friendship, you reap, you wait, you sow, till, till, they're blo till they blossom and they grow. It's kind of curved around the picture. I can't, can't see it all, but it is so pretty. So we got uh, the linen to stitch it on. We got the rick rack, and we got the floss and the little pin. So I love these. This is the second one. My third one just came in actually. I'm going to save it for the next one and because, you know, I want to make sure everyone's had a chance to open theirs before I show it anyway. Uh, it is a club. I think it's filled already, but you can always check to see if they have a waiting list. Okay, project bag. This is from a, a longtime YouTube subscriber to my channel and member of the Facebook group. My name is Damaris. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, she had messaged me and asked just some questions that she was wanting to start an Etsy shop and sell her project bags and other hand-sewn items. And so she just asked me like what I prefer when it comes to project bag sizes and things like that and some shipping related questions being a new shop owner. So um, anyway, she had she let me know when she opened and so I went and checked out her shop and she does the patchwork bags and I absolutely love the patchwork style and she does the quilted uh, like a quilt block on the front of a lot of hers so this is the one that I purchased it's a beautiful you just thought of spring and summer projects being perfect in this so this is the front and the back is all patchwork and it is just so well made and beautifully stitched has a zipper on the front with a coordinating fabric inside and so she also kindly sent me a sweet card and included a free little gift um, of this beautiful quilted notebook holder and so thank you so much and her shop name is practical stitches by d and i will link that below she's also active on instagram where she posts updates where of projects that she's working on and going to post to her shop soon so if you like this style of bag i think you would love her shop so um, check that out and i will link it below uh, Nashville Hall, I think, is what's left for the most part. And then I'll talk a little bit about plans, and then we should be able to wrap it up. So I did end up getting the cross-stitch journal from Primrose Cottage. I don't think I, uh, I bought this later when I realized what it was. It's not just a tracker, but it has um, stickers inside. It has a page of beautiful stickers, as well as two pages of stickers, actually. Here's another page all stitchy themed stuff. It's got a page for notes. And then I really like this one. I have the, uh, the Fat Quarter Shop journals as well that I really like, but this one has two pages for each project. So it has your pattern name, designer, start end date, stitch count, a uh, whole list where you can write your floss brand and color, if there was a stitch along, who was hosted by, all the hashtags, finishing information, and notes, plus a place for a picture. So this one really gives you an opportunity to write down all your details, and I just, I love it. I was thinking I would do a book for each year. I When I first started stitching, I was really good about writing all this stuff down. And then for some reason, after I started the channel, I guess I feel like I'm documenting it here. Plus, on Instagram, I usually always post the details of the floss and everything once I finish. So I've been really bad about writing it down. So I'm hoping this kind of changes that. And it's a really nice journal. Plus, it comes with a really pretty stitched pattern. Let me see if I can find it. So this is the chart. It comes with a little flower basket chart to stitch. And the pattern is inside this journal. So that was another reason that I really wanted it. But it is a very nice journal. So... Um, that is from Primrose Cottage. This is the only little gadget thing that I bought from Market, but it is called the Cross Stitch Buddy. And I have not even taken it out of the thing yet, but it is from the Stitchy Pros and it is meant to work on light or dark fabric. So it's made of this clear acrylic and it's a ruler. You can wind your th floss around it to cut it. It's has information on it about how many strands to use, your stitch count, um, 
the needle size to use. It's got the corner gauge if you want to start two, two and a half, or three inches. It's called the Ultimate Cross Stitch Buddy because it's really supposed to have everything that you need. It's an eight in one tool. And so um, I just thought it would be nice to have this in my, you know, next to my stitchy stuff. And I did hear um, in the last floss tube from the attic, Carolyn mentioned that they have this and they really like it. And it really does work on light or dark fabric. So I'm glad that I got it. Okay, so got the cookbook because it has a lot of patterns in it. I haven't even looked through it yet, but I didn't want to miss it because they don't reprint them after they've run out. I got Hello from Liz Matthews, You've Got the Love. I love the simplicity of this one, so you can make it into a pillow or frame it. I'm not sure what I will do, but I just thought it was a really sweet design. Luminous Fiber Arts, I got Autumn's Acorns and gathering violets i always love misty's designs so i have the whole collection of these um, so i decided to add that one and then american flag by erin elizabeth i just thought that was really pretty and i ended up getting the dinky dyes to go with that one so this is the the colors that go with that and i love that the white is not stitched it is the fabric so you just have to stitch the red and the blue and then this one is absolutely one of my favorite releases from market. It's Pump Street Proverbs 31 Sampler. My plan is to actually stitch this twice. Um, one is a gift for my mother-in-law and then one for me. I have fabric that I think I want to do this on. I'm either going to do it on XJU Baby Sheep or Old Sheep. They're both beautiful colors and I need to order the floss for this. I'm going to do the over dyed and the, well it's DMC and over dyed. And, um, I want to start this and I'm actually it's kind of hard to tell when you look at the cover photo to scale like how big it is so I've seen people start this and the border is really small it's got a really sweet design it's 115 by 115 so I think it'll be doable to stitch two of these um, I need to if I don't stitch them together if I just stitch hers first I may not ever get around to stitching mine so I probably should stitch them together side by side at the same time but anyway um, I just know this is something my mother-in-law would absolutely love and I would love to stitch it for maybe her birthday or something one year. So that's something I hope to start soon. I did get the 12 monthly minis from Primrose Cottage. Love these. And those should be really small, quick stitches. This I've heard is going to be a series. And this is from Summer House Stitch Works, The Faith. So I think they're gonna have faith, hope, and love. And I love how she changes the colors in these patterns. I have the ones for the seasons as well that I haven't stitched yet. So, okay, these, let's see, well, let me show you this. A spring Quaker, had to have it because I've got all the other Quakers. So I had to add that to the collection. These I did not order, pre-order at all. I saw them, I thought they were cute, but uh, Abby Top Knot, you know, it's, it's bad to be on Instagram when people are at market because they're always posting little sneak peeks when they're in the rooms or when they are, you know, when they're seeing things up close and then they show you what the actual model looks like. So she was posting and she posted these and they had the finishing pieces and that really sold me. So this is from Pedal Pusher. This is called Troublemakers and it's the little crows with the pumpkin patch. And then this one was called Rascals with the rabbits and I love anything rabbits. And so, if you notice in the picture, it's got the little finishing boards, which really, I think, just make the piece. And so she had the whole kit as well. So I got the little finishing pieces, um, and they are from the Hoop and Bobbin Needleworks, and they're not painted yet. So I'll just paint them to match whatever I choose to stitch them with. This one is painted green in the picture, and that looks like a dark gray or black. So anyway, when I saw that with the finishing piece, I just like, well, can't resist so all right blackbird designs i never pass up the new release books when i see them just because they're a classic and wanted to add that to my collection so there's some beautiful pieces in this book as well as moments of of uh, glad grace so many beautiful things so these were the the releases from blackbird And then I just really was drawn to this one. It's um, One Stitch at a Time by Lottie Daw. 
And it says, beautiful things come together one stitch at a time. And I just really would love to stitch that and put it next to my stitching area or something like that. But um, love that one. And then the JBW Designs, always a favorite. And I just, I love cardinals. And this one is when cardinals appear. I love all the red. So I did get this one. And also her French, uh, Renee's French Alphabet. I just thought it would be uh, nice to have these you know, if you ever need to customize your monogram, something for a gift for someone, for a wedding gift or a baby gift, this seemed like a great thing to have on hand. And then Erica Michaels, I bought this possibly to stitch up as a gift for Mother's Day. Not this year, not going to happen, <laughs> but it is really beautiful. And you can do the berry, the pillow, or the larger sampler. So I'll have to look at that and see what I think. Um, they would like as gifts more, but it's really a beautiful sentiment. So, and then October House, the Pollinator's Garden. I love the simplicity of this one. It would be a beautiful little sti um, spring stitch, and I really like how they made it into the long pillow. So I'll probably do that as well. I think I have the red version of this. I forgot what it's called. It came out last year. This is October House Americana Blue. And I love the sewing notions on that, the house, everything. So, and then this one is Blueberry Ridge Sampler Seasons Spring. And this is, I already have the autumn, I think. So I definitely wanted to collect all of those. And then we're getting to the end. We're getting to the end. <laughs> uh, this is the Patriotic Quaker from um, Primrose Cottage, as well as the quilt. The American quilt what is it called red white and blue quilt and then I obviously had to get their snowman 2024 because I did the one last year last year was the first one this is the second release of the snowman for this year and then my last purchase was this kit and this was another one that I did not see until later I didn't really realize what it was but it's a full little kit so it comes in this bag and it's a JBW Designs, and um, the tag came off the outside, but it includes her pattern for an ode to red. So this is the pattern, and I thought it was beautiful, but like I said, I didn't realize it was the full little kit, and so I can't resist a good kit or a finishing piece or something, so that's why I ended up getting this. So it does come with a DMC, the backing fabric, the mat board, everything you need, plus the linen to stitch it on to make it match the little finish on the front so this would be a really nice little gift for a stitcher too just because of the way it comes packaged and if you love red like I do it's a really pretty little piece so I think that was it um, I think I have one or two more patterns coming in from Hobby House that that she was still waiting on um, they're in the mail to me I ordered from a lot of different places I for market time I try to spread the love spread the business and just a lot of different people I order from Hobby House Top Knot Stitcher um, who else do I love to order from um, I can't even think right now I did order from a new place called Celtic Sisters Legal Art I will link them below they were amazing I, got, I think I got the cross stitch buddy and some of the dinky dies from them and they were like the first order that I got after market. They were super fast. Not to say that everyone's not, but I'm just saying I was really impressed. That was my first time ordering from them. And she'd even uh, did a follow-up email saying that she was sorry the post office was taking longer with the shipments. And I had actually already gotten mine, so I messaged her back saying, no worries, I got mine. It's market time. <laughs> I think everyone understands, but um, I definitely will be ordering again from them too. They had a, a nice selection of fabric and things on their website. So anyway, um, this one came in this one is not one that i purchased but i think it was released at market from little robin designs it's straight in your crown we got this as a free pattern for the annabella's retreat back in the winter retreat this was like a freebie but i wasn't allowed to show you because it wasn't released for market yet so they asked us to to not share it so anyway i did get that as well speaking of annabella's the retreat is coming up this saturday already i had to miss the last one because my dog was very ill at that time and I, we didn't know what was going on then and so i had i was wasn't able to attend but i was i received all the patterns and stuff so this time hopefully i'll be able to join in this saturday the designer is stitching with the housewives um priscilla 
So I'm very excited to see what she has for us. And uh, she's already given the floss list and the supplies that we need for our pattern, though we haven't gotten any sneak peeks yet. So I'm very excited for that. So I will be happy to share all that with you on my next video. And then let me just quickly talk about plans, what I've got coming up. I'm gonna be joining in a sow with Handmade by Sarah W. and Paper Crane Yarns. Uh, she is a yarn shop, but she's also getting into cross stitch. So they chose a pattern from Market. And so I had not purchased that one. I ended up buying it from Paper Crane Yarns uh, to support her shop. And I'm still waiting in it to come in. It's been delayed in the post office. So I don't have that pattern to show you. If I can find a picture, I will link put it on the screen. But I do have all my supplies. So I'm going to be doing the Weeks Dye Works Floss. And these colors are just so beautiful. So beautiful greens and uh, the teals. And I'm doing mine since it's a darker fabric and I I kind of struggle with the darker fabrics. So I've decided to do mine on Ada and it's a 16 count and it is Night Sky by Fiber on a Whim. So this is my choice of fabric. And then these are the beautiful colors on the fabric. So can't wait to start that when it comes in. I will probably post it to Instagram once I get a start. So those are the colors and how they're going to look on the Night Sky Ada. And also when I was ordering these, I wasn't sure about my fabric choice. I really wanted to try this Night Sky, but I ended up ordering a piece of what Sarah was using. And she was using, picture this plus 16 count in Dusk, which is another beautiful color. And those colors look really pretty on it. So since I liked the night sky, I decided to use that for the botanical sal. But when I saw this, I thought of this pattern that I've been wanting to stitch for such a long time. I had originally seen it on um, So Me Sarah's YouTube Floss 2 channel. And it's the Modern Folk Embroidery, How Doth a Little Busy Bee. And I loved the floss that she used. She chose the Classic Color Works Queen Bee. And it is just perfect. So I've had this in my stash forever as the, with the pattern. I was just kind of... I really wanted to do it on the dark fabric, but I was kind of like not sure if I wanted to do it on a really black Ada or, or what. So I decided to use this fabric for this stitch and I think it's going to be perfect to really get the look of what the cover photo is showing. So this is something I want to start soon. I think it's a great spring summer stitch with the bead. And then I have two more things, two more plans to share with you. And then I think that'll be enough for today's video. So. <laughs> um, so this is the piece that I bought after my dog passed. I didn't, this was a new release for Nashville. I didn't pre-order it at the time. I had seen it, I thought it was beautiful, but I just didn't think I needed it. And then the time came that I felt like I did. So I'm hoping this is kind of a healing stitch for me as I stitch on this, I can think about all the, the happy memories. And it is the Rainbow Crossing by Silver Creek Samplers. And so it says, the time has come, I can't deny to let you gen your gentle spirit fly. We'll meet again, it's not the end. Wait by the bridge for me, old friend. So I just love that. And um, I'm not gonna do the initials just because it's going to be um, just something to commemorate all of the pets that we've lost. And so um, I just decided to leave that off and I may do something on the back where I can slip a little um, project card or something and then I can put maybe some more personal details on the back. So that's my plan. I got my supplies from 123 Stitch. They didn't, it's all DMC. They did not have the called for fabric. This original was stitched on 18 count Blue Ridge by um, Atomic Ranch and they didn't have that. So I have a piece of 18 count Ariel Ada, which is a very light blue to me. It looks very similar to that picture. It's my picture of this plus. So this is a great option that I may do it on, but I also have some 28 count in this color Lugana coming, cause I'm not sure, I haven't, I'm not sure yet which I wanna do it on, but I'm gonna do it on one of these two. So I haven't sorted it yet. And I have, but I do have all my, all the beautiful DMC colors. It's got purples, it's got blues and tons of greens. So lots of pretty colors and I can't wait to start that. And um, I wasn't ready to start it right away anyway. I needed a little time, but I'm, I got it kitted up and 
I, I do think it's going to be a very special stitch. Lastly, what I'm working on, I love challenging myself to try new finishing techniques. That's been a big part of my floss tube channel journey, sharing with you, trying all the new things. So I love taking finishing classes. And so the Vintage Stitcher, Artie, she has a Patreon channel. And every month, um, if you're a Tier 3 member, they do a finishing class. And so last month it was a flat fold and she used one of Annie the Proper Stitcher's patterns for that. I wasn't a member at the time, but I can go back and watch that class, which I'm very glad about because I wanted to see how she does the flat folds. But this month is going to be one of the Annie B's pairs. So uh, you can pick any one that you want to stitch. I ended up going with this. I love the spring green. So I ended up buying this kit from Country Sampler. They had a kit that has the linen, it has the finishing fabric and the wool and the floss, everything that you need to finish the pair. So I'm going to stitch it and it's using the call for, I think, 36 count agave linen. So um, it should look like the photo and I was just happy to find it. I love things that are kitted up. Like I said before, it's just easy to grab and go. So I'm going to just try to have one stitch for the class. And I think there's enough in here to do all three though, but I'm going to have one stitched and she said even if you don't have it stitched, no worries, you can make it out of just regular fabric and that honestly may be the better thing to do in case I make a mistake, but I would love to have this stitched by the end of the month. So be starting that soon. If you are interested in finishing classes, that's a great place to join and check out. I think next month the talk is maybe to do a Biscornu. So I am enjoying that and learning more things. So like I said, those are the plans. I am actually going to be starting my first Mirabilia soon. So I think I'm going to wait and share all that with you next time though. I've, I've overloaded you today. And like I said, this is not a normal haul for me. This is Nashville plus two months. So um, anyway, I, so I plan on not buying patterns for a while. That is the hope and the plan. Like uh, if I need supplies to start these things, okay. But I need to go on a little bit of a pattern diet, I think. So thank you for hanging in there with me. If you've stuck through this video, uh, <laughs> I know it was much longer than usual. Let me know in the comments, like I said, your thoughts on doing the live stitch with me. So if you think this would be fun, if you have any ideas, if you have any questions, please leave them below. And I am so happy to be back and I will see you very soon. Happy stitching.